So in part six of creating this hover crosshair uh, lines in Chart.js, we're going to work on hovering the item here that we make this line and then hit the specific area. So we're going to scroll down here and continue on where we left off here. So what I'm going to do is make us basically a lot of it is same logic. So let me just say here line. Oh no, this is not the line. We're going to create a line. Let's make that one here. And then after that, it's a lot of identical. So we say line, which is the, let's say hover line. So what I'm going to say here, ctx dot begin path, create the line here ctx.move to, and I will go faster now because most of it will be quite understood. And then you would say here, line two. So I need the X and Y here. I will know that I will start at the left side and at the right side. And then here would be the position of wherever we hover on. So what I need here is probably figuring out what is the index number, which if you remember, we have here the Hoover index. I realized you could even grab this data for my other item to grab the specific date, but it doesn't matter. So what I'm going to do here is we have this value that we finally start to use. So I can say here probably, well, let's make this 100 for now. But what I do want is to figure out here the value. So I need this. So this is the index number. So I need probably the data dot data sets index zero dot data. And then grab that here. And then dot y. Let me double check if we have the object data in our object destruction. All right, we do have it. So if I save this, refresh. Uh, there we are, 131. So this is quite interesting. Doesn't find it at all. So let me double check. What is our Hoover index? Undefined. All right. So that's interesting. So we have an undefined issue here. So what I need to do here is see if we probably have the same logic of an if statement here. We either have, yes, I guess we have to do this one here where we have an if statement to see if we're hovering on. If we do in that very case, we're going to do something. So what I'm going to say here, this, but all properly in indented. Uh, yes, like that. There we are. So once we have this, we should get here now an Hoover index because now undefined is gone. As you can see here, that makes sense. If it's undefined, it gives you the error because it's, it has no value. So once I have this here, I get here the Hoover index, which is index number six. But the value is 21. Um, and then, of course, as I hover everywhere else, it will get the matching value. So basically here, we are quite fast done. We can just grab this, put it in here, put it in there. I'll just remove these two. Save it. Refresh. And all right. Of course, it doesn't draw yet. The reason why is we have to say here, CTX stroke as the command to draw, save. There we are, but it gives us this weird value here above. Uh, let's see why. So the reason why we have is we get the value of 21, 3, 4, 5, or let's say 3 pixels. So basically it's, it assumes it's 3 pixels, but I need to say whatever is the Y value, convert the Y value into a uh, the pixel. So we say Y get the pixel for the value of our Y of 21 or whatever we're hovering on. Same logic for here. Make sure you have two parentheses, save that refresh. All right, now we have that. You can see it will hit nicely the moment we hover over it. That's interesting. Although this one here is not really, I have to check on this, what's going on here. You can see here we are slightly, well, not really, I guess the code is slightly different on that. So maybe, well, I'll check it later on. Probably what we did here 
could be maybe done differently. Anyway, we have this. Let's give it a proper line color, or we, I'll just leave it on black, but I'll just say here, CTX at stroke style. Black. Then I want to say CTX at set uh, line dash, and I will make this one slightly different, three by three, more dotted, smaller dots. And then after that, once I did that, of course, I want to make sure we remove that. So we're going to make it blank after save, refresh. There we are. So it will not bleed over anything else. You can see here, it will be on top of each other. That's fine. That's black. So what I can do here now is make a black cloud as well. So I say here, hoover cloud. And in the hoover cloud, we're going to use again the same logic. I'm going to just grab all of this, or at least some of it. Then I'm going to remove the set line dash. I'm going to say here, uh, CTX dot round rectangle. And then say here, not the stroke, because I want to have a background color, not the border color. So I'm going to say a fill style. Here, X, Y, uh, width, height, radius. Radius, I'll put on four, so we have a nice round of radius. So X and Y. So first of all, we know this is like that. We're going to grab all of this item, put it in here. Uh, width and height. So we know here the text. Or do we? Well, probably almost identical to that. So let me just grab some of it. So we don't have to spend, or we don't have to reinvent the wheel again. Uh, nearest height, let's see here. I don't even know where exactly it is. It's, it's in the static one. Sorry, that's the one I, I remember again. It's in the static text width. So let's grab whatever the text width is. Go up here, uh, the width, but here in the width, the text width will be based on the text, but I think we have a text width here as well. So text width, let's say Hoover, let's give it another name, Hoover text width for the cloud. Then here is not the last point anymore, but basically what we can grab here, and that's quite nice, move this and get the Hoover index. Just grab that one. Then the Hoover text width can be set here. For the height, 20 pixels will be fine. Uh, save, refresh. All right. Make sure we have ctx.fill to give the command to draw. Save. There we are. Let's reposition this a little bit. We're going to say here on the right, that is fine, but we want to go up. So it's a minus 10 pixels. By doing that, we are now nicely in the center. All right, and you can see it overlaps it because it should be because it's uh, the way it is, I guess, in this case, uh, because of the hoover, yes. So the reason why is the one is static, it's being drawn before anything else, and the hoovering effect will only draw on top the moment there's a hoover, so that's why it is on top. All right, let's see here. Right, that works all fine. I thought I saw something. So what I want to do next is the text. Hoover text will be quite similar. It is CTX that font. I'm going to say here bold as well, 12 pixels, sans serif. Then I'm going to say CTX that fill style. I'll make it white because we have black text. That would make sense. To make it then the opposite color. And then we're going to say here, CTX that fill text is whatever the text would be, the X and Y coordinates. Um, we can probably grab here the right side for the X and the Y. I'm going to just put that in here and see how that goes. Then for the text, I need to get the exact value, which is basically this item here. And then we're going to put it in the text. All right. You can see we have something, but it's positioned at the very top. So what I'm going to say here, CTX that text align center. All right. Then what I want to do is I want to push it. Oh, all right. My bad. I'm saying here minus. I should do plus 10. Or nothing at all, I guess. 
there we are I need to push this of course to the right so this is number 18 all right push this more to the right side so I'm going to say here plus whatever is the text with the Hoover text width divide by 2 prioritize this save refresh there we are and you can see it changes in size the moment the font is smaller or there's lesser text beautiful so we have that all in here. Are we missing anything else? Not that I know of, but we can still fine tune a few items. So what I want to do here, check this out, but that will be in the next video. We're just going to debug this weird item, which of course makes sense because you can see here that when we hit this part, it jumps away. So it should be close into that area.